live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. I'm here in Las Vegas with 32,000 of my favorite cloud friends. We're at Amazon reInvent and this thing has exploded. Bigger than we've ever seen it. We've been coming for years. Here with my co-host John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE Media. And we're going to get into it with Michael Laveau, a longtime veteran of the industry. Great resume, check out his LinkedIn profile, but currently, he's the global MD of Accenture Cloud Platform. Michael, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, great to be here. Yeah, so Jeff again, John. looking uh, looking at your background before you came on, you, you've seen this movie from a lot of different angles. I, I've Startup, been around the block. BC, yeah, I've government. been around the block, I've been in the government, been uh, at IBM, been uh, in startups, yeah, worked with uh, VCs, and um, yeah, part of the appeal to go to Accenture, for me, three and a half years ago, was this you know, driving cloud into a large, you know, now 400,000 person organization, 30 billion in revenue. How do, you, how do you kind of transform that kind of an organization to be on the right side of history right. when it comes to you know, the benefits of cloud? And that's, that's exciting. So you, you look at kind of governments, IBM, startups, you kind of pull all that together yeah. and you apply it. And to, Accenture uh, also transformed as a company because you know, going back from the old days, the big six accounting firms doing mini computer, 10 year deployments. I mean, okay, not 10 years, but it felt like 10 lots years. Lots of people, now lots of years. Now it's a technology play yeah. for the big global integrators. Right, right. There's real tech involved, data science, machine learning. Take a minute to take us through the journey of that transformation of Accenture. Accenture's journey? Well, you know, think about With it. cloud and tech, as it, as it has to be an enabler. Right, but you're hitting the point. Right, GSI, Global Systems Integrator, is not relevant. GSI, Global Service Integrator, is. And so when you see the kind of function and capabilities that are coming out of you know, a platform like Amazon, it's service integration. And so for the last decade, the industry's been on this forced march, and it was kind of misguided early on with web services and SOA, but you know, if you know one yeah. of their lead evangelists, Jeff Barr, he and I were on a uh, panel in 2003. So it's not like we haven't yeah. thought through this, right. this, this transformation, but you know, uh, I thought um, Andy's keynote this morning was just awesome because he kind of went through, started off with hardware. Started off with hardware, <laughs> talking about boxes. Well last right. night, right? Was silicon chips are well, building, right? The, the, scale that, the scale that they bring to bear right. now. Right, well I look at the, fla the different piece. flavors, right. different units, you know, for all sorts of use cases, right? And then blowing that out. So what we're talking about is this evolution over the past 10 years or so, right. to get to this point, they still call it day one. Right, <laughs> that's shocking to me, right? This is like Groundhog Day. It's the longest day one in history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, it, but it does it's feel like- innings, whatever you want to call that's it. Right. <laughs> but it does feel like there's a tipping point. There, there's a clear field difference from this year to last year. Oh. And, and, and Accenture was highlighted in the other portion of the keynote this morning at the Italian energy company that you guys right. helped them right. We helped them move, moving their business Right to to uh, Amazon. Right, and that was that was great. I thought he was terrific. So it's it's not the overnight success, and then you find out they've been working hard for years and years and years. But why do you think it, it's a tipping point now? What what is kind of crossed over? You or know, is there one, or is it just suddenly you get to a critical you, you mass? You know what they say, right? It takes uh, 20 years to get to an overnight success, right? right? right. Um, and so you know, I think what we've tipped. I mean, a year ago we announced our joint group with Amazon. Um, the Amazon Accenture Business Group. And that was a real tipping point for us to be on stage, to announce that joint investment um, around setting up a competency, people, certifications, assets, and taking that to market. So Enel is a direct result of that, right? They benefit specifically from that capability. And so that has been off the chart successful, you know, as a you know combined entity to go after this market and help large enterprises make that move. Michael, talk about the sequence of order of operations, if you will, on on your plan, you, your practice. You set up with AWS. What was the sequence of how you executed that? I'm, it's a if little. If you can hear, we, this is live TV, and someone's got a big PA system. Right, they got a bigger, bigger speaker than you do. <laughs> Turn up our speakers, guys. What was the sequence of your build out of your practice? 
for so yeah, the U.S. Again, nothing overnight. So, you know, for the last five years, we started with a small Amazon practice. Started, you know, there were, we think about four years ago, we had a small group, barely, you know, could fit around this table. Um, yesterday, we had all the Accenture people together with the Accenture leadership this year. We, we filled a room of over 300 people from Accenture. So, you know, you think about that level of commitment, you know, to a partnership and to a market. So it grew incrementally. That's, you know, it's, it's agile. Yeah, you know, so each year we just kind of stepped up our game. Year over year, we built out assets, we trained people, you know, and it's just that, that focus around rotating to public cloud and making that work you know, for ourselves. Because even, you know, we eat our own dog food. So Accenture itself, 60 odd percent of our applications, our workload, is in the public cloud. How many? 60%. 60. The average for most enterprises is less than 10%. We're already at 60%. Within the next two years, with probably less than that, we'll be at 90%. So that's over 6,000 applications already moved, and we're taking out one data center after another and migrating that workload all to the cloud. And we're proving to ourselves that it works, that it's, it's fundamental to a business. So, so the classic tale is, you know, it's, it's cheaper to rent for a while, but at some point in time, it's cheaper to own. Yeah, this no. clearly flies right in the face right of the kind face of that of old that. school yeah. presumption. So what have you found within eating your own dog food that, that actually not being in the infrastructure business right. enables you guys to do? See, that's the misnomer, right, about cloud, that you know, you're, you're basically you know, renting time and you know, when you lease, it costs more. Um, no, you see, the, the key thing about cloud is, is changing your operating model. You, you have to have you know, a different set of people, different orientation around how you operate in the cloud. And what you find is that you, know, you, you uh, are managing um, to the valleys instead of the peaks, all right? You're putting in place scheduled operations so that you know, certain boxes only run nine by five. You know, most boxes in the old world ran you know, 724. You didn't care, right? In a CapEx versus OpEx model, you weren't as concerned in, in you know, what was happening that day. And so now you're changing the operating model around being in the day, being in the month, um, you know, putting cost controls in place, putting RBACs and permissions in place so you know who has access to what environments, um, creating blueprints so that you can one-click order stacks of, of compute um, with applications, the full stack, making it you know, that easy just to you know, provision, um, whether it's SharePoint, or Sitecore, or Hybris, or even SAP, you know, we've changed that whole game around standing up and provisioning these environments, and then t shutting them down. Then shutting it down. All right, so you got to put those policies in place in order to control those environments. Mike, I want to stay on the, uh, the theme of um, replacing the data center, or moving the data center to the cloud. Right. That seems Snow to be... Snowmobile, what'd huh? you think of that? <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can just truck it all out to the cloud, but that is kind of more advanced on the progress bar of, of enterprises, nearly test dev, starting to see that, the, that seems to be the final step, the data center. What experience do right. you guys have with your clients? Can you share some anecdotal data on some of the customer scenarios around, ones that are seriously saying, look it, I need help, I want to be out of the data center right. business, maybe not 100% footprint, but majority of the stuff in the cloud. What's that like? So, you know, there's an interesting evolution, and you know, I'll give you like the four phases. Um, you know, what, what we had you know, in the last 10 years is a lot of shadow efforts going on, greenfield application work that you know, people pulled out a charge card, went straight to Amazon, you know, and then they spun up an environment because they could get one in five minutes right. versus six months, <laughs> right? So, th so that was a big deal. You, know, you went from servers under the desk to servers in the cloud, and you know, eventually people, IT, started to discover that people were doing this Right, and they were you know, actually trying to run, go into production. And so once they went from dev test and pre-prod into production, all of a sudden you had this requirement, right? Security, you know, policy, right. you know, permissions, cost management. So you're operating now in the cloud. So, um, so that kind of started to shift the game. Once IT operations started to get involved, they, they wanted to sever that direct developer access to the native consoles. Why? Because of all those issues that come into play um, around you know, service levels and security and whatnot. 
you know, what organizations then were trying to do is, well, you know, this cloud is really serious. We, you know, uh, we, we want to move more and more workload you know, to the cloud, and we want to leverage, they have to create an integration layer to leverage the, the legacy data that might be still resident, all right, because you have a lot of mode one applications that are there. So what we find is that most organizations are running by modal. They've got uh, this two speed IT, they've got the cloud speed and they've got the legacy speed. They've got to integrate between them, they've got to govern you know, these services, but they can't encumber them with restrictions or you know, kind of heavy duty controls um, because what you want to do is unleash the innovation. You know, I was amazed by you know, certain use cases around the snowballs. That's innovation, people coming up with new use cases for technology that you know, they couldn't, couldn't imagine before, right? And so what we've seen is a lot of innovation, and so how does IT now enable that innovation? How do you kind of accelerate the agility in an organization? We just did some research on this, and you know, really that's what organizations are looking for. Help me innovate, help me change my game, all right, before I get disrupted. And, that, and that's what cloud's all about. My final question for you is um, this notion of multi-cloud. Obviously Amazon's got a lot of good in this area. We're big fans of what they've done. Innovation's phenomenal. But there's still a multi-vendor scenario. Most large enterprises have right. that strategy. How do you talk about that with your customers vis-a-vis -vis the AWS practice? Well, I think what we're seeing, and you know, it's hard to hear because of the level of buzz <laughs> in the hall here, right? I mean, what we're More seeing is that you know, there's a, a, a just an excitement around the Amazon platform, you know, and the thirty odd thousand of your friends who are here, right? That 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 excitement is driving. So we've got you know the most certifications, the most competencies around Amazon, and what that that's doing is helping people on that journey um, to cloud now. Organizations are looking at you know, other, other hyper providers, all right? And they're trying to figure out kind of how you know, they, they uh, you know, leverage the cloud economic model. And then that's footed based on getting rid of cement and assets and to a degree shifting people, all right, in order to you know, kind of pay for moving to the cloud. That's where the real benefit is. It's, it's when you look at the TCO, you know, the, the, the total cost of ownership, you know, if you don't kind of move from one mode to the next aggressively, you don't get the economic the benefits benefit. of operating now in the cloud. And so that, that's really the, the journey that we find ourselves on, and people are doing that. They're moving, they're moving now, and that's the tipping point for like the next 10 years. You know, you're going to see a wholesale shift um, in, in the market. We're, we're entering into something I think of as like the post-infrastructure era. Um, and all that means is between serverless and cloud and containers that the whole model is, is just changing dramatically and we're here to help, help clients you yeah. know, on that journey. Awesome, thanks for the insight there. The world is changing, it's cloud infrastructure, post-infrastructure. I mean, you're seeing it right now here. They're doing their own silicon, making it smaller, faster, cheaper. That's the cloud law. Michael, thanks so much for sharing the Accenture update, and congratulations on your practice. Thank you, with thank AWS. you. This is theCUBE, thank you're watching you live thank coverage you, of reInvent 2016. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>